Okay, we got some we got some vent liners ready to rock and roll here, Declan. It is what so seven thousand people currently skipping out on work on this free agency frenzy bonanza Monday. And I think when you take away the draft party episodes, I think this is currently the most people we've ever had at one time watching the Purple Daily YouTube channel. So thank you guys for helping us get to new heights today. Most definitely. A new era for the Minnesota Vikings. Dex, who's first out of the gate? Kirk Cousins to the Atlanta Falcons. New era for the Vikings vent line. All right, let's go to Trey to start. What's up, Trey? Trey. Oh, bro. Wow. For one, good to see you guys again. Um, secondly, want to shout out Purple Daily on Draft. Uh, Miles is actually a good friend of mine. So, um, wow. $180 million. Um Wow, that's that's all I have to say about that. Um, that's you like that? good, good, you like good that? for Kirk. Like, wish him all the best. Thank you for the thank you for the memories and the dimes. Um, I remember one of his first throws to Stefan Diggs against the Packers. That um, like forty yard touchdown bomb. So yeah. good on him. But wow, um, if you guys don't mind, I have I have one kind of write that down ish. Um, with the third overall pick, the Minnesota Vikings select Drake May from North Carolina. Wow, dude. Um, and then real <laughs> quick with uh, Phil and Dex being wrestling fans, write that down. Seth Rollins will turn on Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania. <laughs> oh, dude. Trey, just um, slinging the predictions, man. <laughs> Love it, so, dude. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, again, shout out. Forness and Miles. I actually play with Miles on a flag football team. I'll see him on Saturday. So uh, thank you guys for letting me on. Again, last word. Wow. Thank <laughs> you, Trey. Appreciate you Trey. coming on. The kind words. Yeah, I think I think wow in, encapsulates the last couple hours here for the Vikings. And we'll keep our eye on other news and, and stuff, too, as we go here. But we've transitioned to the vent line portion. Who's next, Declan? All right, let's go to Rudy. Rudy. What's up, pal? Yo, what's up, players? Man, it's a great day in Vikings Nation, man. Uh, let's just recap real quick what happened, you know what I mean? Uh, year one, came in with the number one defense for, off the NC Championship game. And what do you do? We, we go eight and nine or something bad? And then what? And then the years in between, what is what is the? Uh, it's always something like an excuse, you know, the coaches, uh, the players, the scheme. Uh, we have what? What is that boy? Filippo, that who was all John D. Filippo, eighty yeah. percent passing. So it was always an excuse in between the years. And then finally, when he actually has something. When we went 13 and four, what did he do? Fourth and eight. Yeah, hey, let me just throw it two yards. That will always be in Vikings history right there. It, aside from that little bomb with Thielen did and the Saints game. But, you know, it's a great day. And here's another thing, too. We got three defensive players right now on free agency, right? So that means we're not going to be drafting them. We're going to use those picks to move up and get J.J. McCarthy, baby. Let's go. Skull. Dude, I think, okay, Rudy is, Rudy is fired up, man. I love the enthusiasm. I love the look. And he brought up a really good point. The Vikings today signed two edge rushers in their mid-late 20s, mm-hmm. right? Because Van Ginkle's 28, isn't he? He is 28 and a half. He'll be 29 when the season starts. And uh, Grenard is going to be 27 when the season starts. Most mock drafts, if not Vikings drafting quarterback, have had Vikings drafting one of these edge rushers with the 11th overall pick. So to his point, now they could still draft a young edge rusher and now just have a beast rotation of edge rushers, but this this makes it even more likely that they're going to use chips to move up to draft a quarterback, right? I think that's right. The, the place that they still could go defensively would probably be defensive tackle. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I think that all signs are, are that they're trying to bolster the defense as much as possible through this, and that um, I got to think they're going to – I, I got to think they're at least going to try to get up to the Chargers pick at five. And would, would that be enough even? Could Can someone McCar- jump up to four? Well, I mean, is that McCarth- would be... Is, is Mc- J.J. McCarthy going to go four or Drake May four? Well, I'm guessing if you're at five, one of those three is going to fall to you. Or four is going to fall to you. I'm sorry. Drake if you May, get to if you get to five, I'm saying you might have to get to four. Is what right? I'm no, saying. no. But I, but what I'm saying is I think one of those wide receivers. I don't know the Cardinals are going to move off 
because you know if if they take Marvin Harrison Jr. at four, yeah, that's huge for Kyler Murray. So I think you could. I think you at least have to get to five. But yeah, three three would be nice. I guess the question there is: Are you going to give up two future firsts and this year's first to yeah. get up to three? But maybe you will. Let's keep the vent line going here. The post Kirk Cousins era Vikings vent line on Purple Daily. All right, let's go to Seamus next. What's up, Seamus? Hey, what's going on, guys? First time caller, long time listener, season ticket holder, based out of Arizona. Oh, nice. Boom. Yep. Seamus, let's go. Yeah, my boss actually just sent me a team's message. He's a Minnesota native, born and raised, and said, did you see it? And I told him, of course I saw it, you know. Um, but really exciting news, I think, in my young Vikings history of being a fan this day um, is near the top alongside the miracle or the playoff win against the Cowboys in the old Metrodome. So been a season ticket holder for eight years, excited for the future. The enemy of great is good what Kirk Cousins is we won a Super Bowl I love to win but time to go get our quarterback and really trust KOC um picking the right guy he's gonna pick the right guy whatever that is at whatever pick so what a day happy for Kirk to judge judge point no Viking fan should be upset that contract we can't match it there's no chance four years 180 million dollars good for Kirk um, but great day for Vikings fans. Really excited to see what happens in April, and hopefully in the next couple days or weeks, we get some news about a move up and a draft pick. Amen, Seamus. Thanks for coming on, man. Skull. Appreciate you Thank making you. his debut here on Ventline. Yeah, I mean he nailed it. We we talked about this a little bit off the top, but it's when you're in that comfort zone, and there's there's always like three or four teams where you've got your comfortable quarterback. He's really good, and it's unlikely you're just going to flip a switch and replace him with someone apples for apples who's better. It's it, it's comfortable, you know. It's that it's that cushy job that pays you pretty darn well. You kind of dread it, but you got the weekends, you know. It's like, but the the risk of leaving that job for something else, God, you could wind up homeless or something. You don't know, or you could wind up getting into a way better job that pays you double, or start your own business and have it blow up, right? Like. To be to be comfortable is sometimes dangerous, especially in the NFL. I agree. Good is the enemy of great, and the, the Vikings have been good at quarterback for six years, but their team hasn't done anything. Yeah, not anymore. Exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah, let's keep going. This is awesome. All right, Vikings. Good call. Line. Good call. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to Jonathan next year. What's up, Jonathan? You're on that line. Hi there. I'm a big fan from the UK. Um. I'm just so glad we've escaped the mediocrity. Um, 16 and 47 against over 500 teams. Like, I, I mean, I say I'm kind of surprised someone's fallen for it again. It's Kurt being the final piece, but you know, like, it's not that surprising at the end of the day, is it? Because we fell for it. Um, the, the Washington uh, Commanders um, tagged him twice. I mean, he's got the greatest agent of all time. You know, he's a Hall of Fame negotiator, but. I mean, like the the record speaks for himself. He's, you know, subpar. Mm-hmm. Will be a far better team, you know, with whoever it is. I'm not. I'm not fussed with who we have at quarterback because, I mean, as you've seen with the signings today, we've been captain free agency for the past five years um, with his crazy uh, cap pits. But yeah, big yeah. fan, Jonathan. Think, thank you for thank coming you. on, man. Appreciate yeah. it. I think the key thing is we don't know. Like, we don't know for sure how this is going to turn out, but it gives you the opportunity to pivot. It gives you the opportunity. There were, I mean, there were flat out because one of how much Kirk was paid, there were flat out deficiencies that you couldn't fix. And and what Quasi exposed by accident was because the 2022 draft was so bad. Like, you can't have, when you have a contract like Kirk's, you can't have a bad draft. Which is sort of ridiculous to say. Now, Quazy whiffed on way too many picks, so I'm not defending him. But, like, you can't miss on picks and be like, okay, that cost us because X, Y, and Z. So, like, there's a and, – and, you know, we don't know that the Vikings are going to be improved. But what we do know is that they're taking a chance in a different uh, track here to try and improve. And I'm excited ab- about that. You know, the Kirk six-year relationship had its moments – it, it was stability of eight or nine wins, a couple of playoff appearances. 
But at the end of the day, you know, you came home every day to Kirk and you knew what to expect. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of variance there. Now, O'Connell did get more from him, but it just sort of got stale. And, and the Falcons basically blew you out of the water contractually so bad that you now have the opportunity to to have a new, exciting football relationship. That's why, you know, we get all these comments, well, Purple Daily without Kirk is going to be dead. What are you talking about? This is going to be one of the most exciting off-seasons probably in the history of this show, if not in the history of this show. I'm very excited for the the short and long-term future of this podcast because we pride ourselves on being just a, a fun daily space for Vikings fans who want this team to win a Super Bowl to show up, to be entertained, to, d- to deliver their opinions, which we open up multiple pipelines for that. And it has felt like, in all honesty, the last especially two or three years that, you know, we've just kind of wanted a new era to start. And if you were a staunch Kirk Cousins fan, there was no chance you were consuming this show on a regular basis. And and I and I always kind of wrestled with that, like, man, should should one of us like fake a passion for Kirk or something? I don't know. Like that's not us, man. We just, we, we give our opinions and we don't, we're not like skip Bayless and whoever and decide to just come up with something ridiculous just to disagree. I mean, this is how we have felt for a couple of years. And I know that there's some fans of Kirk cousins that feel like we're just the show that dunks on him and hates on him. And hopefully now whoever they bring in, at least for the first couple of years, unless they turn into a Christian ponder, and then in which case it might have to take a turn again. Um, Hopefully it just kind of brightens the immediate future for Vikings quarterback conversation. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to uh, Alex next year on Bentline. Hey, Alex, what's up, buddy? Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey, man. Uh, Thanks for having me. Uh, Declan, as I put in the uh, email to you, I kind of come from more of the Kirko Stan perspective, uh, but also, you know, realistic. I thought he got kind of a bad rap uh, initially when he was coming in from a lot of the outside, not just Kirk fan or uh, Vikings fans uh, for the contract that he got. But, you know, when you don't home grow a quarterback, you're going to pay top dollar to try to bring one in. So that's not necessarily his fault. It's the, the franchise's fault. Would have loved to see what he could have done with a full healthy season this year. I thought he looked, uh, you know, uh, a lot different than he had in previous years, more confident. Um, but, you know, with the details of the contract and the moves that they've made so far this uh, this free agent period, it, it takes a lot of the anxiety that I had off of uh, the situation. You know, he was a comfortable quarterback. And, you know, when you stay comfortable, you – don't reach your full potential potential. Uh, so, you know, I think uh, I'm a little weary of McCarthy at five. That That's a l- little more than I would like to pay to, to get up there for him. Uh, but, you know, I, I think, you know, you got to take a chance sometimes. So, yeah, if, you could, the Super Bowl. You could also <laughs> like, like thank you for coming on here, Alex. You know, you, there's a there's a bunch of things you could do. Obviously, trading up is going to be the talk between now and the draft. But if you feel like the cost is going to be too aggressive, it's going to be multiple future first round picks. And you just feel like, how can you be that confident to give up multiple first round picks? It's such a gamble. Well, if you think Michael Penix is more of like a late first round, early second round guy. And okay, we feel like Michael Penix throwing to Justin Jefferson and all these weapons and playing for Kevin O'Connell that we could definitely make that work right on a rookie scale contract. Maybe you go defense or trade back at 11 and accumulate another day two pick and then go grab Michael Penix or Bo Nix. I know Bo Nix is kind of a triggering name for some people, but it is a blank canvas at this point. And I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily guarantee they're going to trade up and make a huge splash. I could see them continuing to look to build their roster and maybe get an extra day two pick and go that route, too. I think this is where O'Connell, though, gets to make that call. Like, if he identifies, and there's four guys here, three of them you you could try and position for, and if he says, this is the guy, like, this is the guy, Quasi, that's going to take you and me to the moon here. We are going in the ring of honor someday because of this. Then I think you move heaven and earth to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, While we're talking about Kirk, though, and I think it's only fair to point this out, I guess, a a little bit more. Kirk Cousins is going to a team that has a a new coach. Now, much like with O'Connell, Raheem Morris and Kirk, I think also date back to, they they crossed paths perhaps in Washington at one point. 
Morris obviously comes from the Rams. He has hired another Rams uh, former assistant by the name of Zach Robinson as his OC. That's all great. So Kirk's going to go into an infrastructure, much like with O'Connell, that that he knows. But I reiterate, he's going to a guy that, or he he's now going to a team that has a defensive coach. I don't think we appreciate enough how much O'Connell did as the main, as the head coach here. So we had final say on everything for Kirk Cousins. And and that's what Kirk, that's where Kirk is taking a chance by leaving. 100%. Kirk Cousins was with, with Zimmer here. You can make up any excuse you want, but he was basically a glorified stat stuffer. He yep. was unbelievable. But go back to those last couple of years when the Vikings were losing games. And in the fourth quarter, the furious rally himself would bring the team back. And, oh, they didn't lose by 14. They lost by seven. But look at what Kirk did. And it's like, okay, let's look at those stats. Let's look at when he did when, when it mattered and when it didn't, okay? The last two years, Kevin O'Connell has have basically done, Phil, what you have jokingly talked about a, a lot with Kirk, which is he made the environment and circumstances about as ideal as you possibly could. He did everything, and Kirk succeeded, and it was impressive. He was really good. Playoff game, he was actually good until you got to nut-cutting time, and then he wasn't. But the point is, he's leaving that, and he's leaving that to make more, and good for him on the contract. But the reality is, when you are going to be, when your head coach is going to be a guy that you might like, but he is a defensive guy first, sound familiar? He's not a guy that centers his life around the quarterback play, Kirk's taking a little bit of a chance here because Kevin O'Connell is probably not going to get the credit that he deserves for doing everything he could to make Kirk as comfortable. And that's the key word with Kirk, right? Comfortable as yeah. comfortable as possible. Yeah. I mean, you, you kind of nailed it in that so much of the discussion has surrounded whether the grass is greener for the Vikings moving on from Kirk, but that's a two way street, man. There's grass on both sides of this street and Kirk has decided that, the grass is greener in a lot of ways. I, it, it's possible he just wants the money and the guarantees, and it, it, it could have it literally could have been could have been anyone. It doesn't matter if it's an offensive, defensive coach. It might just be that he and his family value where are we going to be for the next two or three years more than some of the other right. circumstances. But it's man, you're right. You're passing up an amazing relationship with an offensive head coach. That's he's in your headset. He's t- he's blowing up your phone during the week like in a positive way. He he is pumping your tires on a daily basis. The best wide receiver in the NFL in Justin Jefferson and really good secondary weapons in TJ Hawkinson, Jordan Addison, right? Franchise left tackle, franchise right tackle. A defense that went from 30th in the league to 15th in the league. An organization, by the way, the NFL Players Association annual, second annual uh, voting came out. And the Vikings are universally across the board in every category, one of the two best organizations in the entire NFL. And you're leaving all of that. You you're leaving all of that. Like that's yeah, that's a risky thing on his end too. And not enough has been has been made about that. Like, dude, he could be coming back. And that first year with the Vikings, new system, everything was overwhelming for him. They missed the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Couldn't work with the offensive coordinator, right? I mean, what if what if he can't work with the offensive coordinator? What if it's another John D. Filippo situation? Success by association. Let's just bring somebody else from the McVay coaching tree over, right? Well, and look at how Kirk changed, too. You know, with, with Zimmer, he was sort of distant. He was not happy, you could tell. Those last two, two years with Cousins, or with Cousins with O'Connell, starting the quarterback documentary, I mean, the dude changed. Yep. Like, all of a sudden, he's uh, Kirk O'Chains. He's having fun. And people were like, well, that's Kirk. That's Kirk. We never saw that Kirk with Mike here. Yeah. I am so excited, so excited to talk about a Vikings quarterback and not have to say Kirk Cousins a hundred times every single show. It's going to be so refreshing for this Drake podcast. Drake May for you, a little J.J. McCarthy. Oh, my God. Who's next on Ventline here, Dex? All right, let's go to Tim next year. Hey, Tim, what's up, buddy? Hey, guys, how's it going? What's up, Good. Tim? All right, so I want to be some doom and gloom, Okay. So I think we've had too much fun here. So, like, I'm 34 years old, okay? What's, so let's be real about the Vikings. I'm going to talk about since I've been born, since, the, you know, been born in 1990. So, until then, the only real team that the Vikings have really had were in 98, and Gary Anderson missed a kick that could have brought him to the Super Bowl. Since then, the Vikings have never really had a quarterback, not really. 
that could really bring them somewhere. They've always shopped around free agency. They've done the, the, the uh, free agency thing and they haven't gotten the people. Now I'm glad Kirk is gone because there's no way the Vikings could pay that money. That is, that is robbery. And he just robbed the Falcons bad. Um, but I do have a prediction and the Vikings um, are going to play the Falcons this year in the playoffs. That's what I, I have this for next year. But brings me back is I think this is O'Connell. This is his – he's putting all his chips in. And so Quisi, because if they don't get this quarterback right in the draft, they're all getting fired. Because I, I think so. I think next year, that's it. If they don't get this right, which I don't think they will because the Vikings never do. And I think what will end up happening is they'll bring a quarterback in. He won't be a fit. Because if we look at history – of the Vikings, have they ever gotten it right at quarterback drafting in the last 34 years? Well, they no. haven't. Tim, thanks for jumping on here. Tim, a little cold bucket of water there on the show. Dude, they've only, how many times in 40 years have they even taken a shot in the first or second round for a quarterback? They don't take shots. It's like once every 10 years, they might take a shot in the draft. Like an at, not a Jaron Hall shot or right, John like David Booty, all due respect to Deck. I hear you. An actual you. shot, right? They don't take shots. Tim, it's Sports Dad here, okay? I was 20 when you were born, so let's talk about this for a second. First of all, let's not sell, and I wasn't a big fan of his from a mentality standpoint, but let's not sell Dante Culpepper completely short. Dante Culpepper's knee blew up, um, but 2004 is one of the greatest seasons I've ever seen from a Viking QB, and that QB was better than Kirk was. Kirk's best year, Dante's best year, better um it was a borderline if Peyton Manning didn't exist and didn't have a great year it was an MVP type of year okay I feel like we sell Culpepper way 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 short there um unfortunate circumstances but that's number one the other thing is is Tim remember as we talked about earlier in today's program Kevin O'Connell was hired here largely to get this right like the Wilfs can be blamed of a lot of things, but the Wilfs want to win. And the Wilfs have seen, I I contend without, without knowing this for sure, that Rick Spielman was fired in part because he couldn't find a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Now, Teddy was too bad, not his fault, but Ponder was his fault. Signing Cousins was his fault, which was a you know desperation play that didn't work out at all at the time. So, Tim, I, I would say, I don't think it's fair to assume that just because this franchise has swung and missed. And to Phil's point, it's only been on rare occasions. You could make the argument that they should have been drafting quarterbacks more. That's a whole different discussion. But Kevin O'Connell is here to do this. Like this, again, this is his moment. This is right now starts his moment. And Tim's right. If they fail, they will all be fired. But they deserve the opportunity to try. But like, uh, I'm, so I'm, I'm, not that I'm also... Of, I'm, not that I'm so sick part. of that way of looking at everything. This like, oh my God, what if they miss on the quarterback? Oh my God, if it doesn't work, they're everyone's gonna get fired. Okay, okay, yeah, they will. But but what if they hit on the quarterback? What if they hit on a Josh Allen, a Lamar Jackson, a Justin Herbert, a Patrick Mahomes? And that's what they deserve the chance. Jordan to do. Love, C.J. Stroud. Yes, but they get what, the grace to try this. And if they hit on one of those guys, guess what's going to happen? They're going to get extensions, they're the and they're going to go deep in the playoffs, and they're going to have stability for years and years, yeah. and they're going to be able to build a monster roster. Like the way that so many Vikings fans look at this as, oh my God, the worst possible but, thing that could happen because it's happened. Like look at the bad things that have happened before. Okay, but Tim, then maybe Vi- they're due. They're due for a for a big swing and a hit at quarterback. But Tim needs purple therapy because he's not now at least he didn't say well if you let cousins go that's going to be a huge mistake because like like there are some the fear mongering is twofold to me it's cousins if if kirk goes who's going to replace him and it's the longtime vikings fan who just says we've always bleeped this thing up but you need purple therapy baby you just need to sit back and understand like the circumstances. There's no reason why Kevin O'Connell should be expected to repeat the mistakes of Rick Spielman. Like why he's here to do this. This is why you hired him. And yes, is his job on the line? If he screws it up? Absolutely. And that's everyone's fine. job is on the line. Exactly. Bill Belichick the just got is, fired. Like, you, well, and, and you can't, but I mean, if I would agree with Tim completely, if Spielman was still here, 
And I get the whole, look, 98 was great. I was like six. I really don't have a conscious memory of the 98 season. And that's what the one that everyone goes back to. Well, they had their complete team. They just missed a kick. So are we just going to hold out that, oh, 98 was it? And now we shouldn't even take another shot or they shouldn't even do anything else because we missed our one chance when we had a super offense. They're going to still try. And what's then like, what's really the point in my opinion? And I love having, you know, debates with fans. What's, what's the point of being a fan? If we're just going to hold on to one thing that happened to you 40, Dude. 30 years ago, there's no point. There's no point. Then but what? That, go be a Packer fan. Then go be a Patriots fan. If this no, is no, all no. you're going to hang your hat on is what the hell happened in 1998. We are here to help. We are here to help. There's fear. There's fear out there, and I get it. But but you have to look at this. This is why we are here. This is why we are. You see, there are some people that claim to be Vikings therapists, but they don't understand how tough this job can be. They don't understand the real fear. And I want them to be Vikings fans. I don't want to kick them off. That That's why the Vikings fans who bought into Kirk, we forgive you. Yeah. It happens. Dude, the, the, this... Yes, we are here and we are certified Vikings therapists on Purple Day. It's a hard We're job. Here for you. But but I, I brought this analogy up earlier in the show, and I think a lot of people can resonate with it, especially today with Kirk Cousins. And and we had the caller from a few minutes ago say, good is the enemy of great. And he's 100% correct. Uh -huh. I have so many friends, family members in my life that I can think of. Like I remember one of my one of my good friends 10 or 12 years ago, he told, and I always thought, hey, he's got a nice house, lives in the suburbs, you know, family, whatever. And and he told me how much he makes at his job. And it was like pretty good, like like really comfortable, nice salary. And I said, God, yeah, it must be, must be pretty good. And he goes, dude, I am miserable because my job is so safe and I make enough money to where it'd be stupid to leave. But I hate going into work every single day. I'm not fulfilling my potential as a person. That's wow. been the Vikings for six years. It's really safe and comfortable to have Kirk Cousins as your quarterback. You're going to be able to live in a nice house in the suburbs and have a family, and it's a good-paying job, right? But you go to bed every single night wondering, man, what if I quit this job and took a real shot? Started that company I've been thinking about starting, right? Right. Or, yeah. or interview, took a shot at this other job opening over here that pays twice as much. You know, what's going to happen? They say no. Oh, now you're jobless. Well, you'll go find another job. You know, like, don't get comfortable. You're not actually fulfilling your potential as a franchise when you employ Kirk Cousins for six years. It guarantees that you're going to be comfortable, but it also guarantees that you're not going to do the only thing in franchise history that you haven't done, which is win a Super Bowl. And plus, now you got a chance to get it right. Dude, they quit their the Vikings quit their job today and said, I'm starting that company. Let's go for it. And it's super exciting. And it could yeah. crash and burn. But then you know what? They'll just go find another Kirk Cousins say, and get comfortable and burned again. Before. Yeah. They drafted Christian Ponder. Was that 2011? Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So within six years, they were in the NFC Championship game. And actually, the year so, after, 2012, they went 10 and six and went to the playoffs. playoffs. Yeah. So. And then, by the way, four years sure. later, four years later, they drafted another quarterback. Or actually, three years later, they drafted another quarterback. Four years yep. later, they were back hosting a home playoff game. Yeah, so I'm not And, really and about to win it, if not for Blair Walsh. You're going to continue to take shots. So, who's next? Vikings All right, let's go to the iceberg. Here. What's up? Does that sound good? Nice. I don't yeah, know. really good. Yeah, really good, great. dude. Awesome. Iceberg. Well, let's go. I do this nice. full time, so. Um, but go. I'm glad I'm next because I can't. One, Mackie, you called it. Uh, with Atlanta, like all the way back in October, you got so much crap for Everyone it. Everyone laughed at us. Everyone I did. laughed oh, at us. Put that out there I today. did. Do it. Do it. Should Seriously, I put that back re out? I'm going to go find the original it. tweet. Yeah. But I I can't stand that loser mentality, and so many Vikings fans have it, and it pisses me off. I'm a Cubs fan, right? <laughs> if there's any fan base that knows what it means to suck forever and constantly swing and miss forever, it should be Cubs fans. And you know what? In 2016, after taking shot after shot after shot, not doing the same thing they've done for 108 years, they won the World Series. I know it's not a one-to-one -one comparison, but Atlanta, I, I don't get Atlanta's thinking here. Like when the Vikings brought Kirk in, they were 13 and three. They had almost made it to a home Super Bowl. It was the last piece. Atlanta is way far away from that. And this seems to me like a complete desperation buy. I am all in on getting 
a, a quarterback in the draft trade up. I don't care. Like you, you're going to have plenty of drafts after this. If you, if you swing and miss, so be it. Cause I have seen just about every team of people I'm friends with either draft a quarterback, like my friend who's a Houston Texans fan or go to a super bowl because they put the pieces in place like the Rams. I, I the bears right now, they're doing better. I would say than the Vikings are of putting a full team together trade up i think you have to trade up top three like i i know i'm probably not in the popular side of this with vikings twitter right now i don't see the hype with jj mccarthy i think it's daniels or may go after one of the high-end ones if you're gonna go all in go all in don't oh let's go to five or go to eight or, or whatever it might be uh looking at what the vikings need most in the draft they've filled up the the sides they need on defense for the most part i mean don't get me wrong it's definitely not there yet there's still another year or two away i don't think anyone's thinking this is a super bowl team uh but offensively what do you need a quarterback a running back and probably somebody in the offensive line because when do we not need somebody on the offensive line you can get a running back at any point in the draft you can get a guard or whoever center whatever in the middle of the draft i don't see you know getting a quarterback past the first round that we can be confident in going in unless you want Sam Darnold starting out, which at that point, then you're just going for the next year's draft pick. I am completely fine moving on from Kirk going seven to 10 wins a year, having a 13 win blip year that you check down on fourth and eight, and then take the day off on Tuesday. Like I don't do. Uh, if you get a rookie, <laughs> you get, you could win three to six games and it could suck. It could, we could get Christian Ponder. Okay. Like we haven't got bad quarterbacks before you get 10, 13 wins, go, you know, put a Super Bowl team together. I I'm sick of this, this like hold it back mentality because it didn't work before. Well, OK, so try something a bit different this time. Yeah. Trade up, be aggressive fail, and fail fast. Go just yeah. like, OK, try it again. If it doesn't work, cool. Try it again. Try it I mean, again. How many quarterbacks have we seen the last few years that, yeah, they can they can lead a team into the playoffs, but divisional round is all you can get but a big but, part of this too though is i i don't so i don't think we should be hung up on 2024 uh, if they don't fill those needs okay you didn't fill those needs you're rebuilding a roster basically so there seems to be this mistaken well if you don't win because vikings fans are used to winning eight to nine to ten games right if you don't win next year it's a failure first of all two things i'm not convinced bryce young sucks now the Panthers are a dumpster fire, but mm -hmm. I'm not convinced. He Dude, sucks. Josh Allen was a dumpster fire and, for like two years, right? Well, yeah. And if Carolina had done it right, but because they trade up for Bryce, they, I mean, they had, let's say you're the Vikings and you draft Drake May. And let's say he's not prepared to play yet. And he plays and he gets good experience. You don't ruin him, but you win three games. You yeah. know what you get? A really high draft pick, a really high draft pick. If you have your draft pick, that's great. But the fact is, like, this is going to be a process. I, I there's too, We're too hung up. Like, look at today's signings. They're not signing yes. old guys that are going to wash out in a year or two. They're, they're, they're replenishing the roster with serviceable players to, or good players who can step in and fill needs in 2024, but more importantly, probably 2025. So I think we need to, I think we need to quit this whole conversation of, well, you need this and you need that and you need no, you really don't. Okay. The, your running back room. Let's say it ain't good next year. Well, first of all, it wasn't good last year. And second of all, when you're ready to pop, those are the type of positions that you fill. So I, I just think we need to back off this whole thing of, well, if they're not good next year, they're all fired and it's done. Literally today, with Kirk with Kirk gone, Quasi and O'Connell have bought themselves at least a couple of years. You, you can't get a you, you can't can't get touch a, them. Get an extension after this. I think they right? will. Like no, so, like, right. but like you've just hit on this this really important point that we should be mindful of here going forward. It's two things. One, okay, this this open this move today with Kirk Cousins opens up a little grace period, right? Because now it's all right. Yep. They, they literally don't know who their starting quarterback is going to be in 2024. Yep. So there should be a grace period. But these people that think. They've decided now to strip it down to the studs. Like that saying goodbye to Kirk Cousins means that it's a complete rebuild. Straight Justin Jefferson. It's all, You're it's right. all, no, 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 no. Yep. No, 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 no. 
there's a really good chance that the Vikings com- compete for a playoff spot still. I haven't, I don't know what the odds are going to be or what the over under win total is going to be. We got to see how the offseason plays out. But your team still has, dude, they just added three really good starting defensive players today yep. to help replace Daniel Hunter. Yep. They're not done yet. There's still money to be spent going into 2025, 26, too. You could put money into those years. You still have Justin Jefferson almost certainly coming back on a huge contract extension. Now, if they decide to trade him, okay, we can have a discussion. But I don't think you make those signings today and then go and trade Justin Jefferson. I think they're signing him for like $35 million a year. Mm-hmm. This offense has weapons everywhere, left tackle, right tackle, good coaching staff. Like, this team is likely to compete for eight, nine, maybe ten wins if they can get some competence at quarterback in year one, right? Maybe they get lucky and they find a C.J. Stroud right out of the gate, and the infrastructure helps elevate that young quarterback. Mm -hmm. Maybe the veteran bridge that they find is good enough for a half season or whatever, or maybe they sit their rookie quarterback for a full year. But Mm -hmm. this roster, even without Kirk, this is like people think like, oh, you're going to run Jaron Hall out there all year or Nick Mullins. No, they're not, dude. They're not. That's not what's going to happen. And and you're going to get a full season of Justin Jefferson here too. But if they don't compete, like let's say they don't compete, Okay. Like, we're so adverse. We're so afraid of, well, if they're not competitive, you know what happens then? You might get a high draft pick. And the other thing, too, is go back uh, to what we're going to see next March, which at this point is going to put them with so much uh, salary cap space. Like, today, a a year from now today could be absolutely nuts. And that's going to lead to a almost certainly winning roster for so like this is a this is a process i i I was screaming at the at um i i had an a serious an nfl network show on a couple of days ago and i was screaming at the radio because nobody understands roster you driving construction. while you're screaming or what yeah and don's like why are you so worked up i'm like because nobody understands roster construction everybody <laughs> talks about these years like they're like if you don't win in this year your franchise is gonna fold yeah like like this is an opportunity today is an opportunity if i'm a vikings fan if i'm a true vikings fan i am excited about this this is going to be the shot this is going to be crazy and kevin's chance to take a shot to build a team in their personality like this is exciting folks yeah hey before we get to a few more event liners here a shout out to our friends at federated mutual insurance company if you're a business owner out there do you have a game plan in place to stay focused on safely Uh, I'm sorry, on safety and preventing claims. Let the team at Federated help support your business. Federated Insurance offers a customizable lineup of industry-specific coverages and risk management services to help you continue your winning streak as a business owner. At Federated Mutual Insurance Company, a longtime partner of us here on Purple Daily and across Score North, it's our business to protect yours. Find out more at federatedinsurance.com. Also, for those of you that are going to come and hang out with us, on April 25th at the Purple Daily Draft Party at the Fillmore in Minneapolis. It is sold out right now. We are looking for ways to unlock a few more tickets, so stay tuned on that. But we've partnered with Element Hotel right above the Fillmore. It's attached. It's literally just, like, connected to the Fillmore. A 15% room discount for the Purple Daily Draft Party attendees from the nights of April 25th through April 28th. Go to scorenorth.com slash hotel. To get your discounted hotel rate, that's scornorth.com slash hotel. Thank you to Element Hotel for their partnership. Okay, Dex, who's next on Vikings Vent Line? If you're just joining us, maybe you're at work. Kirk Cousins to the Atlanta Falcons. Four years, $180 million. Over half of that $100 million is guaranteed. All right, let's go to Corey, our guy Corey from Iowa. What's up, Corey? Corey. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up, dude? Not much, not much. Uh, we dodged the bullet today. <laughs> dodged the bullet. I think uh, we that would have been a crazy contract. We would have been talking about another crazy guarantee contract yet again. Um, I think today's a good day. If I was the Vikings, I think they are filling their needs uh, for defense uh, for these next couple of days, free agency-wise. Good choice. Um, but now I think it's going to be Kevin O'Connell's pick. Don't even mess around. If you're going to go and get a quarterback, either get Jaden Daniels or Penix. I know people have a concern about Penix, but he can make all the throws. They're concerned about his knee, but he hasn't even been hurt in Washington. He may be an older quarterback, but he's more of a mature quarterback. You can throw right in there and let's get going. You know, you got an all-star offense with J.J., Addison, 
KJ. Uh, you get you a good running back. I think if you're going to get a rookie, you need to find a good backup quarterback, not just a regular Mullins type quarterback, a good quarterback, a good backup quarterback that can still get you a couple games and, and can do what you ask the, the starting quarterback to do. Um, I think Kevin O'Connell is uh, hopefully coming into his own now. I hope he comes out being aggressive. Um, I know they, you're looking around and looking at our division. Everything looks young now. Everybody's getting younger. Uh, it was a perfect time for it. Uh, wish we could, you know, keep the nail hunter. But you know what? This is a business. You know what I'm saying? We got to move on with it. Um, I think we'll do really good here. Um, and if we have a down year, we have a down year. You know what? But, you know, it, like you guys said, take the swing. We're always the ones playing it safe all the time. This is play it safe. You know what? We're in a position to move up. Take the take the move up. Don't even mess around with it. Get the quarterback. I think Jaden Daniels uh, with uh, Justin Jefferson and he can hit all the throws. He's a trophy winner. Hey, let's let's go with it. You know, I mean, uh, Penix. If you're gonna go with an older quarterback, I'd go with Penix. Uh, he can still. He's not a, a greatest mobile quarterback, but he can move when he needs to. Uh, he can make all the throws. Um, I just think let's be aggressive in this draft and let's let's like this is the dawn of a new day. You know, what I'm saying Kirk got as far as he did. He had his moments, but you know what? At the end of the day, it's time to move on, get younger, get better, and uh, be more excited about the future. Love it, man. Corey from Iowa, one of our favorite regulars on Vikings Vet Line. Put it perfectly. He's yeah. exactly right. We we could disagree on who they should draft, but like I, I think what he said is going to be the view of most real fans of this team. Like the the cousins. Folks, I think we'll probably go with him to Atlanta, but I think the real viewpoint, especially when the thing I like too is the Vikings have turned around and signed three guys on defense. So it's not like, oh my God, they're sitting on all of Kirk's cash, all of his Cole's cash, and what are they going to do? Like they are proactively, I love the fact they're proactively going out and improving that defense for, I think he can say this safely, a guy that's proven he is one of the best defensive coordinators in the entire league. That's the other thing. I mean, think about the upgrade from that Donatel awful, terribly coached season to Brian Flores. Yeah. Get him, get him his guys, man. And Van Ginkle is one of his guys from Miami too. I think, I think he drafted Van Ginkle back in like 2019. The Packers continue to make moves today. So they did say goodbye to Aaron Jones and David Bakhtiari. They brought in Josh Jacobs. And they just signed free agent safety Xavier McKinney yep. previously with the Giants for a $17 million a year contract, multiple yep. year contract. Interesting. So the, the Packers are are making a push for it. All right, who's next on Vikings Vent Line here? Yeah, a few left. Let's go to Mark next year. Hey, what's up, Mark? Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, man. So first I want to kind of echo what Declan was saying about the 98 Vikings. Um one, I don't think it's all on Gary Anderson uh, watching that. I mean, they're kicking field goals the whole game. And then to put it all on one guy is kind of like a failure of the team. So yep. people poo-pooing on Gary, Gary Anderson after being perfect for how many games just isn't fair. Um, second of all, uh, I'm a, I am ai should say I was a Kirk Cousins guy for, you know, I was kind of cheering him on, hoping that everything worked out. But – Today, I'm glad to see it happen the way it did because as the offseason progressed and I started hearing everybody's opinions and just weighing everything out, um, personally, I'm glad to see him move on, get the thing he wants, and I think the Vikings get what they need. And uh, a lot of the a lot of the fans that were kind of poo-pooing on Cousins as far as the, the Giants game, um, you know, he kind of carried the team throughout all of last season. The defense didn't do any any benefits. So the one-dimensional thinking, my, my, my venting is against the fans that are just so one-dimensional in how they view the game and to put it all on just one person, one person, one person. But, you know, he did make – Cousins made his mistakes, and I, I do agree with you guys as far as him being um, – um, time to move on. So I'm excited for the off uh, for the uh, off season, the draft. I don't have I don't know who really have an opinion on who to pick. That's up to the brass, but um, that's all I got. Yeah, Mark, thanks for coming thanks on, man. Up. Appreciate you joining Vent Line. Let's keep it rocking here. We got a couple left for sure. All right, let's go to Nick. He's enjoying the sunshine. What's nice. up, Nick? 
Yes, I am, gentlemen. Uh, happy Monday, right? Glorious time, new era in Vikings football. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of agree with everything that callers and you guys have been saying. I think the whole fear monger or this fear of the unknown is is kind of BS. Honestly, like, when's the last time the Vikings have ever had a quarterback guru type coach and let him take a swing and miss? So the the fear of the unknown, I think, is is misplaced, and yeah. I think it can galvanize Vikings fans that we can all you know, recklessly speculate, speculate on who we're going to draft or who we're going to bring in, but it, it's an exciting time to see who you bring in. And I, yeah, I just think the whole fear of the unknown and not taking swings like that previous caller talked about being a Cubs fan. Like I think this organization to a certain point is, is foolproof in that respect. We're not going to have a Browns 25 year run where people are wearing paper bags on their heads at home games. So right. I, I'm just excited. I can't wait to hear, you know, Royce Unchained just, rip Kirk a new one on how he <laughs> Hall of Fame bag chasered his way to Atlanta. So appreciate you guys. And yeah, just exciting time for news. Awesome, man. Thank, Thank you, Nick. Stuff, man. Appreciate you coming on. Yeah, he started on uh, Twitter. I, I just saw a Patrick tweet. Oh, Royce, he did? Okay. Yeah, yeah. He just started on Twitter. And let's just say, um, yeah, we usually steer clear of what Patrick likes to tweet about. Absolute Hall of Fame bag chaser, though Kirk Cousins, man. Oh like, God, yeah, he's a great, yeah, just but, a legend. Today, again, to, I bow to, down to you. Today was his Super Bowl, yeah. and he threw for 450 yards and five touchdowns in the Super Bowl today. Well, he's. I won. mean, what a perf- what talk about coming through in a high pressure situation, getting that contract today. Mm. He's got four rings. He's a fourth round pick. He's got four rings, dude. Second, every second here. most money in the history of yeah. the NFL in terms of uh, single players. So, yeah, nine years of nothing but guaranteed contracts. It's incredible. Let's go to one last vent liner here. We've transitioned this thing from Purple Daily Reaction into Vikings vent line. It's been good to get your guys' thoughts on it. Who's next, Declan? All right, let's go to Brandon. What's up, Brandon? Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, man. Nice wild. Uh, first time, first time venter. Um, I've been a I've been a Kirk Cousins fan, but um, got to give him props for going and getting the bag. It's a business. Do your thing. Um, excited to see what route we go draft wise. Um, I'm not too sure if we should go a bridge QB or if we should just go for it in the draft and rock with Nick Mullins and throw for 500 yards and five picks every game. Have a little fun with it. Um, I would not give Kirk that money. I think that's way too much. Um, Beforehand, I was under the thought process of, I take a look at Green Bay and I look at what they did with Aaron Rodgers and then what they're doing with Jordan Love and how they go about developing a quarterback. And if we could have gotten Kirk on what Kwesi wanted for one more year, you get your guy, you hear Kevin and Quasey talk a lot about developing a guy the right way. And with like Jaron Hall, they didn't want to just throw him into the fire because that can possibly hurt. Um, I thought Green Bay kind of just has a picture perfect how they're developing guys and it seems to be working for them. Um, but no, I'm, I'm excited. It's going to be fun off season. We're building the trenches on defense and defense wins championships, but I don't have a pick for who to draft. Um, I'm just excited to see what, what it brings so thank you guys right on man brandon thanks thanks for coming on we appreciate it you know it is it is pretty incredible that it's it's very easy to just sit here and say hey man you're go to we'd all take the highest bid right we all if if another company offered you this that the other but at no point in his football life literally at no point has he gone to the team and said okay this is a partnership right how can we together right. partner on this? Like this, this off season would have been a great opportunity for him, right? To say, yeah, how do we get JJ back in here? How do I want to make sure Daniil comes back and that we have a couple extra bucks to maybe go get someone in free agency? What What do you need from me to make that yeah. happen? Are it's it's Jefferson? never about that with him. Yeah, exactly. it, it's always about what can Kirk get for Kirk, either from the Vikings or somebody else. Mm-hmm. And the Falcons stepped up with a better structure and a bigger bag. And that's where that's, that is Kirk's legacy. Kirk's legacy will be contracts. First ever fully guaranteed contract for a quarterback. Probably, probably one of the biggest contracts you've ever seen for a 36 year old player this late in his career. Right. Aaron Rodgers has a, had a pretty big one with the Packers as well, but this like at this point, 
winning games is not his legacy. He's only like a handful of games over 500 in his career. He has one playoff win. Contracts. He's If he gets a Hall of Fame bust, it'll be because of the contracts, not because of the on-field play. Well, the Players Association should build a bust for him right now. He is a hero there because their biggest thing is don't take team friendly deals because that hurts our constituents. Right. And the, the one thing I will say is, okay, it's one thing if you're, you know, if you're in a business and they come to you and you can get more, you should, you should, but let's talk about sports for a second. Cause sports are different. And I understand. Yes. It's a bottom line business and it can be brutal. So good for Kirk. But the reality is if you're Kirk cousins, what's left really winning. That's what's left. And, and yes, you win in business, but I'm sorry. It's not the same as playing a team sport with a salary cap where you can literally help your team win. Mm -hmm. And Kirk cousins, you, you would think at some point in time could look at all of his contracts, fourth round pick all of his contracts and say, you know what? I've done unbelievably well. I'm in a comfortable uh, position here. There are some people that don't want me back, but Kevin O'Connell's good to me. Does it bends over backwards to help me, calms me down when I'm upset, pats me on the head. <laughs> and, you know, I am in a situation where we do have all of these pieces that could make us a Super Bowl team. And darn it, just one time in my life, I'd like to take that run. I'd like to take that chance. Can mm -hmm. I make it? And I know me. You know, Kirk knows himself. Do you he think knows... he thinks he can win a championship? I don't think it ultimately matters to him. I don't yes. think he, I don't think he thinks at the end of the day, like if it, all right, Kirk, you're going to step into the octagon against Patrick Mahomes in a Super Bowl. I don't think he does. Thinks... Kirk think that Kirk can outgunsling the best quarterback in the world. No, I don't think not yeah. a lot of guys can, but I don't know that he thinks he can. And I think that's been part of his problem throughout his no, because Kirk. Yeah. Well, and, and I think part of what so part of where Kirk has not changed is there is definitely an insecurity in Kirk. And it's sort of justified. He's a fourth round pick. He didn't what start for his high school team. He, he was like the fourth guy recruited at Michigan State. And it's great when that fuels you to success. But in Kirk's way, it's almost gone haywire. And what it's fueled him to do is stick it to everyone sort of financially to get their respect. Mm -hmm. Like Brady, sixth round pick, right? And he's like, okay, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you I'm one of the greatest quarterbacks of all bleeping time. And his fuel came that way. With Kirk, it's almost like, I'm going to show you. It's like, yeah, Kirk, how? By getting as much money as I can to force you. From to the system that suppressed my. Respect yeah. me. Yeah. Respect me. And Washington, okay, we'll franchise you for two years. The Vikings come along. We'll pay a three. Okay, that's what I want. It's weird. I don't claim to. Like, there are some things I get about him, but, like, what's the difference between a guy that says, I'm going to stick it to the world by winning as much as I can, yeah, and I'll take some team-friendly contracts, versus the guy who says, you know what, I'm going to make as much as I possibly can, and now it's the Falcons' job to get that championship. A couple other things here, boys, and, and man, we've been rocking for almost two hours here. We also have an hour-long, before Kirk Cousins signed with the Falcons, there's an hour-long reaction to the initial wave of free agency where the Vikings signed uh, Jonathan Greenard. So oh, this is probably a discussion for a different day, but did you notice the Vikings have only put out one statement today about Kirk and it's from Quasi? Yeah. Is that kind of weird? Yes. First of there's, all, there's no statement from Kevin O'Connell. Well, it's weird. First of all, here's my question. When was it written? Was it written on Sunday? Was it written on Saturday? But was don't you think that they morning? would ordinarily well, they would no, do but, the, the Mark Wilf, Kevin no, O'Connell? Because it's not I think they will. It's not official yet. This is why it's weird. It's weird because it's not official. He can't sign until Wednesday. He could okay. flunk the physical. Like for all we know, he could flunk and and then he's so what's weird is that the Vikings proactively are confirming his departure. Forty eight right. hours before his departure can be official. My guess is we are going to get statements from O'Connell and the Wilfs come Wednesday. I find it very intriguing. And I have a respect for the proactiveness that the Vikings have issued a release about something that's not done yet. 
but it's, it's uh, you almost have to, right? Because all the reports are out there, and you almost just to, for for the I think it's the Vikings' way of telling everyone else too, like other bridge quarterbacks and free agents. Hey, just so you know, like yeah, I'm going to give the PR along. department a lot of credit here because there's a lot of PR departments that would not have done this. Agreed. I like it. I'm just saying in this league, you ordinarily don't say a thing until things are on paper and there's no, and, yeah. and Kirk technically can sign till four o'clock Eastern on Wednesday. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll, th- there'll still be some stuff this week where I'm sure we'll tie up some loose Kirk ends, but gentlemen, this is Good pretty much line. the end of Kirk cousins being the main central talking point of this podcast. Right. I mean, this is, I we it. talk about everything Vikings, but Kirk, yeah. Kirk has taken up clearly the most bandwidth in terms of discussion topics on this podcast. And now we get to talk about it the future of the position which i'm excited about and is going to be a lot of fun so great it's kirk though i just don't trust it's done till it's done it feels like the hand from the grave is going to come out i'm just saying i just have a weird gut like i'm just not willing to you waited two hours to say that you think that there might be oh no i'm just saying kirk kirk being kirk i just i i really want to see that contract signed that's all i'm saying (laughs) no i don't i've got no basis i've got no conspiracy theory i'm just saying you guys know there have been a few times where we're like okay enough kirk and then something else happens kirk's gonna talk he's gonna be asked about this i'm very curious to see what he says about his time here now and go like there's just still interesting tentacles there's loose ends for sure to be tied up but i want that contract signed i want him a falcon right now can we just say just sign it early just sign it early right now dude and you can't do it but yeah i don't think there's i think it gets done i'm just you know, the film's about to end. It's like Scream. We're waiting for the credits it's to go like all a, the way through. and Hello, then... hello Kirk. <laughs> we sat You're there for ten, 10 minutes while the credits rolled, and now all of a sudden, yep. oh, there he is. Exactly. There's Kirk. He's Back inside U.S. Bank Stadium. Yep. So, all right. Well, plenty more throughout the week. And if any other big Viking signings happen before the end of the day, we might even hit you with a third episode later today. But... um if not, we will we will record our Tuesday episode tomorrow and we'll be on alert for the rest of the week here as the NFL free agency frenzy bonanza has landed in a big way day at one, baby. TCO Performance Center. It is. It's day one of a new Vikings era, and we are excited for it here. Judd, you know what? Get the flag for oh, a new wait. Vikings era. Now one more I, time. A new Vikings era. This I can get into. There you go, folks. There it is. Kirk might be gone, <laughs> but the Vikings are alive and well. Thank you guys for making Purple Daily one of the top football podcasts in America on the Apple charts. A couple things you can do here if you're still listening at the end. It means you probably like this podcast, and we thank you for that. Click the like button and the subscribe button on the Purple Daily YouTube channel so you can get alerted every time we have new content. And on the audio side, Apple and Spotify. If you can please give us a five-star rating and a positive review, that helps us grow the show as well. So, okay, boys, deep breath. We think we're done for today. We think we're done for today. But we'll see. <laughs> and we'll, be, we'll be waiting for more but news if, to come down. If the Vikings make the trade with the Patriots at like 5 p.m. where they've acquired the third pick, we'll be back. <laughs> we just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl. At some point before we die, and now they can get down to business building the next phase. We'll see you guys next time on Purple Daily.